So we do have an update about the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. So we are now learning a police officer had his rifle aimed at the gunman before he even entered that school. The officer asked his supervisor for permission to take the shot, but his supervisor either didn't hear him or didn't respond in time. So this is just the latest example of police failing to act to stop the gunman. So here's the question, right, that everybody seems to be wondering, should he have just taken the shot? And what would have happened had he shot that gunman, would the police officer have been, um, you know, penalized? Would the 21 uh, victims now still be alive? Um, I just want yes. to get this out of the way, and then I want you guys to please take the conversation. We did speak with Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. She's a retired LAPD officer. She's been on her show. This is her exact quote. He did not, he did not need approval from a supervisor to discharge his gun to save a life. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. Right. I, I thought it just sounded ridiculous, Lindsay, just because in real time, I can't call and say I have, I've got a shot on this guy. Like, they don't know what angle I'm at if there are people around. I think that you train people to know whether to take that shot or not. Like, I don't know, but I would assume you don't call your boss and say, can I shoot this guy? What is what and are you, It's hard mob? to know where the communication fell and where it didn't fall because a lot of the stories we've been hearing from the Uvalde police, unfortunately, have changed day by day. And so I think, you know, there were several opportunities, whether you want to call this man the worst one for not taking that shot or them for waiting outside the school for too long and not saving children. Like, even one life that could have been saved by the police doing the job that they were asked to do or they, they signed up to do would have been favorable in this situation. It's just unfortunate that we keep hearing about all these mis steps and it's like no one stepped in and was going to be the hero for little children. Nobody thought that this was a good time to make that decision, but we see this decision made time and time again, like people being killed, black people being killed for no reason. And I'm not saying that this is an uh, epidemic with that happening because there are more police officers that are good than bad. However, I do think that we're seeing that happen and those shots being taken and these not, and that's unfortunate. Right. Yeah, I agree with you guys. You know, especially five years ago, I try to put myself in the, those shoes of the people that we talk about, and I can't because I haven't been through the training. But five years ago, I think that shot would have been taken. Mm. I think the vilification of police officers and what they have to go through on a daily basis and us dismantling them, I think prohibited him from taking that shot. I heard it was a long range rifle. He had him and he was like, I don't know if that's a gun. Maybe that might be a stick. If you take that shot and you shoot a kid that's holding a stick, guess who now is on the front page of every newspaper in America, that police officer. So there's something in their head, some consciously saying, I better be damn sure that when I take this shot, it's for real. And I wouldn't, I gotta be honest, five years ago, I would've took that shot. This kid crashed, he ran out of the car, There's he just he killed somebody. He shot his right. mother in the face. There's no thinking, it, right. there's no thinking, I'm gonna take that shot. Today, I don't know if I'm taking that shot because of the scrutiny and the vilification of police. And it's just but where we are. You gotta, I, if I you're going to vilify you. police, expect things I like this you. to happen as well. But we also have to look at it as a case-by-case -case basis. And I appreciate you putting yourself in the shoes of a police officer because you're right. There's more good police officers than bad police officers. But what we've seen from Uvalde specifically, and this isn't what you're saying, but I'm just no, saying. No, yes, I'm not taking no, 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 Uvalde's no, 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 police side. I, know, I, know. Yes, I just yeah. want to make it very clear to our viewers. What they have seen is they have seen a pattern of behavior in Uvalde of harassment harassing the local citizens, mm -hmm. of not showing up to the local citizens' doors when they need help. So there is some sort of culture in Uvalde with their police department that doesn't equate to protect and serve. Right. And I think that's where this whole situation in Uvalde um, yeah. reeks of dismantling. If there's that's a, what I was going to say. They dismantled the, the police department in Ferguson, and they should do that here. This is, this is well prime said. grounds for that. Yeah.